hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making an animated children's toy. Well, it wasn't that long ago on the show that I introduced you to this book, which is Animated Animal Toys in Wood. And it is a wonderful book with many different projects. And you know, Christmas is quickly approaching. I hate to say it, but it is. And now is the time to start making gifts for the young ones. So I thought that I would pick another project from this book today, demonstrate how to make it and the different processes that I use to make them from this book, and see if there's those of you out there who are interested. So without further ado, let's have a look at the project that I've chosen. Well, the pattern that I've chosen to make for this gift is the Hungry Hippo, starting in chapter four of the book. It's a simple pattern. It's a one page pattern. The first thing that you want to do is you want to make a photocopy of that pattern at 100%. Now for this one, we're going to start on the body. And for that, you're going to need a blank. I've chosen walnut just to give the dark color of the hippo. Um, it is an inch and a half thick, it is three inches wide and seven and a half inches long. The very first thing I want to do is I want to cover the entire top surface of this blank with masking tape. From there, I will take the body pattern, I will spray it with spray adhesive, allow it to sit for three minutes to tack up, and then we will rub it down onto the masking tape on our blank. That will make the pattern a lot easier to remove once we're done cutting and won't leave any sticky glue residue from the spray adhesive. Well, the first thing that I'd like to point out is that the book states that the size of the blank is seven and a half inches long. I like a little bit of wiggle room. I cut mine seven and three quarters, and this is still super, super tight. So I've made a note in my book that I would prefer this blank to be eight inches long. So you may want to think of that as well. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to drill these three holes here. This one here, the eye hole, will end up being the hinge of our mouth and our two axle holes for the wheels. Now these two are three eighths of a di uh, in diameter. This eye hole here, we're actually gonna drill this at 7 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. First things first, guys, whether you're building a toy or whether you're building fine furniture, accuracy is important and it's good to keep those practices in mind as you go. So before you drill any hole, you want to center punch it. Also, when working with wood, while twist bits are cute and everything, they're more for metal working. So you really want to get yourself some brad point bits. You'll find your accuracy is much better. The brad point with the center punch now has somewhere to go and the edges get a much more crisp and clean cut due to the way the bits are designed. So brad points for wood, twist bits for metal. Either way, let's get these through holes drilled and then we can move on. Now with the body being an inch and a half thick, you, for those of you who are scroll saw enthusiasts, you very well could cut this on the scroll saw. Um, but it is a tough cut and you do risk a lot of blade deflection. So because of that, I've chosen to use the bandsaw. I have a 3 16 blade in here at 10 teeth per inch and I'm just gonna carefully cut around the perimeter. I'm gonna cut slightly outside of the lines so that I can sand up to them to get the perfect fit once I get all of the cutting done. And at this point, I'm just gonna take it over to the oscillating drum sander and we will sand up to the lines all the way around our body. Well, I just wanna show you that by using this masking tape method, how easily the pattern comes off with no residue. You can just peel it off and be done with it. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to take this over to the router table. I'm going to put a quarter inch round over all the way around on both sides. And then I'm gonna give this a really good sanding to about 220 grit. And with that, our body is done. And we can put it off to the side. 
We're going to turn our attention now over here on our pattern to our head spacer. Now this head spacer is a smaller piece. It is one and five eighths of an inch thick. And I have this block of walnut here. What I'm going to do is just like we did with the body, I'm gonna apply masking tape, spray adhesive, attach the pattern. We are gonna rough cut it out at the bandsaw and then we will sand almost up to the line on our piece to complete it. And that is the center core or the spacer for our head done. Now, I know I said I was gonna sand up to the lines, but the only line that I sanded up to is this inner curve right here, only because I won't be able to sand that later. The rest of them actually follow the profile of the hippo's nose up top here. And we're gonna sand that flush once we cut those pieces. Now that's what we're gonna work on next. These will be stack cut. So what I have is two pieces of 3 8 of an inch thick walnut. It's three inches wide and five inches long, and I have taped them together using some masking tape, making sure to coat the one surface with masking tape so that we can have easy pattern removal. Now, you have to remember when stack cutting that while it's wonderful to be able to duplicate your successes with the stack cutting, it will also duplicate your mistakes. So you want to be very careful with how you're cutting. And for this, I'm gonna to turn to my tried and true method of the scroll saw, because that's what I prefer. If you don't have a scroll saw, you can still cut this out on a band saw or using a hand fret saw that would work as well but for me it's going to be done on the scroll saw we will attach our pattern i'm going to get the hole drilled here in our piece which will be a 5 16 diameter hole and once we get that done we can cut this all the way around to the perimeter Around the nose section, you're gonna to wanna to cut it just a little bit outside the line. And when you get it done, do not remove the pattern. Well, I don't know if you can see this, but right around the nose area where this spacer piece goes, I have cut just outside the lines. The rest of it I have cut on the lines uh, because sanding will be a little bit difficult afterwards. But what we're going to do is I'm going to sand the inner surfaces of both of these. I'm going to glue this in place, being our spacer for our head. And once we get it somewhat the way that we want it, I'm going to take a 5 16 diameter dowel. I'm going to place it down in the holes of our eyes, just like this. And then I'm going to clamp this up making sure that everything fits properly and that the eye holes line up. And once I'm completely happy with it, I'll clamp it and we'll let that dry. While waiting for our head glue up to be done, I've made the four wheels that are required for this hippo. Two for the rear and two for the front. These are half inch wide discs they are one and three quarter inch in diameter and they have a 5 16 hole drilled in the middle. Now I turn these on the lathe. If you don't have a lathe, you can use a hole saw, you can use a band saw and then sand them up to the line. You can use a scroll saw, you can use whatever you have at your disposal. Um, a lathe for me is the easiest and I have one, so that is what the method that I chose. So these two are the rear wheels, and there's nothing special about them at all, but the front wheels have something a little different, and this is what gives it the action of the head or the mouth opening and closing. And what we have is on the center line here, we have on center, half an inch out from the center of 
our middle hole here, I have drilled a stopped 3 8 diameter hole. The centers of these two holes are a half an inch apart. And eventually, when we glue these wheels on, there will be a 3 8 dowel that will be there that will be the actuation for the hippo's mouth. So those are the wheels completed now. And at this point, after all of that, our hippo's head is dry. So I'm going to take this over to um, some sanders on convex curves, these outer convex curves, I will use a belt or disc sander. On the concave curves or the inner curves, I'm going to use my oscillating drum. So you want to sand this up so that all of these surface are all of these surfaces are smooth and we get a really nice transition here and a really nice even surfaces across the hippo's mouth. And we can see what a really nice level surface we have all the way around. It just looks great. Uh, we can peel off the pattern at this point in time and we have a couple of holes to drill. So let me just show you what we want to do with those. Well, lining up with the marks on the pattern, I have drawn a center line across the front underside of our hippo's mouth. And then measuring in from the each edge, I have come in 11 sixteenths. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to brace this up with a setup block. And on each one of those center marks here that I've marked on our hippo's mouth, I am going to drill a quarter inch deep, three eighths diameter hole. And with those holes drilled, that will be for the hippo's teeth. I'm now going to give this entire piece a good sanding all over, being sure to break these sharp edges. Uh, sand it all the way up to 220 grit. Well, the head is all sanded up and it looks great. And we're just going to install the teeth. And I have some sections here or some pieces of 3 8 diameter dowel. I have sand at the top so it's rounded open over and we will cut them to a length or I've cut them to a length rather so that when they are in the holes they protrude out of our hippo's mouth by 7 16 of an inch. So I'm just going to put a little dab of glue in each one of these holes. Okay and we can glue these in place and they will look just great. Uh, I've used the contrasting wood dowels as opposed to using walnut this way. They look like teeth. All right, and there we go. And we can just let those dry up. So at this point in time now, um, there's really not much to do other than the assembly. So following the dimensions in the pattern, I have cut the rear axle. It is 5 16 in diameter, and I believe it's 2 and 5 8 of an inch long. And we're going to glue this, our two rear wheels, we're going to glue them onto our axle. We'll glue one in place. And then from there, we can place our axle through our toy and then we can glue our other wheel in place as well. You want to be careful of squeeze out here because you don't want to glue um, your wheels to the body of your toy. So we have the first one there. We can just insert this into our rear axle and we'll apply a little bit of glue onto or into the hole of our wheel and we'll just put that in place before it sets. Just make sure that your wheels turn freely. And once you're happy with that, you can just let it dry. Well, the next step in our assembly has to do with our front wheels. And I've cut some lengths of 3 8 diameter dowel. I believe they're 3 quarters of an inch long. And we're going to glue them into those outside holes that we drilled into our front wheels. So once we have that done, I have a 5 16 diameter dowel. It is 3 and 3 quarters of an inch long as per the material cut list. And what we're going to do is take one of our front wheels and we will glue this 
onto our axle. You want to make sure that those 3 8 diameter dowels that you glued in here are on the inside of the wheel and that your axle protrudes just a tiny little bit here on your wheel. After you get that glued in place, we can place this wheel in here just like this and we will glue our other wheel onto our axle again just so that it protrudes just a little bit from the surface of our wheel. Well the last thing to do is to install the head and um, I have this pattern calls for 732nd axle pins. Now you can buy them but I can make my own in the shop. Um, so that's all I've done is I've made some axle pins here with some dowel and some maple for the tops and we'll just glue these in place to hold our head where it needs to be make sure it's centered also make sure you're not pinching it make sure there's plenty of room for this to move and once you get those glued in place and the glue is all dry you can sand these axles flush and at that point your project is pretty much done so let me get that done and I'll come back and show you what we ended up with. And when it's all said and done, you end up with a toy that looks like this. And honestly, how adorable is that? I mean, what kid wouldn't love to play with this munching hippo kind of thing? Um, the dowels here on the inside of our wheels, depending on how much you want this guy to chomp, you can either place them at the same spot on each wheel so that he only chomps once per rotation. I have mine so that they're placed opposite, so that makes him chomp twice per rotation of the wheels. And it gives that kind of chomping, clicking sound. Now I've made a little modification to mine. I've drilled a hole down through his head here with a larger hole in the bottom and that will be for a pull string. I've also turned a knob to be holding on to so that he can be pulled along and you know that's the way my granddaughter likes to play with these things. She likes to take them for walks as she says and uh, this little guy will be chomping along behind her and I'm sure she's just gonna love it. And there you have it. The Hungry Hippo um, from Animated Animal Toys in Wood by David Wakefield. Now guys, this project here is just a blast. It is a load of fun. And I know that there are going to be some of you out there that are thinking, oh, Kenny got this book for free, or, you know, he's got some deal with David Wakefield. I've never spoken to the man. I don't know the man. All I know is that his book is awesome. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But I paid for this book out of money out of my own pocket and I have nothing to gain from promoting it. But what you have to gain is these toys. I mean, these are absolutely spectacular toys. They're a load of fun to make and I'm telling you from personal experience, from watching my granddaughter play with these things that I make her, she loves these toys. Um, that dinosaur that I made on the show previously when I first introduced this book, that thing has made more laps around my house than I think I have. She is constantly walking with that thing in tow. And with that being said, that is the reason that I added the pull cord or the tow rope or whatever you want to call it onto this toy. I will caution you about adding that pull rope. I use paracord, turned a knob to make it easier for her to hold, but it can pose and can create a strangulation risk. So please guys, if you are going to add a pull a rope onto this paracord, whatever it is, please make it shorter in length and as well, do not put it in the bed with the child ever, ever, ever. And I, I know it sounds silly for me to have to say it, but do not let the child play with this toy unsupervised if you are going to be putting a rope on it because you are asking for a disaster and a tragedy. 
So if that's the route that you're going to take, just remember it's under supervision and never, ever, ever let the child sleep with that toy. Never. Either way, guys, this book is a load of fun, has a lot of great projects, and uh, honestly, you can't go wrong with making some of these for the young people in your life. Guys, now I know that there are going to be some of you out there that say, gee, you know, I wish that my children were younger or I wish that my granddaughters were younger or my grandsons or whatever. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You don't have to build it for your children. Christmas is fast approaching, approaching faster than what any of us really want to admit that it is. Now is the time to be making these toys. So if you don't have children of an age that would play with these, Good gosh, man, make a bunch of them and donate them to your local women's shelter to give to the children who are less privileged at Christmas. Make their Christmas special by a toy that you made for them. I mean, what a gift. What a gift. Honestly, think about it. Think about it. Uh, donate them. Give them to children in your neighborhood, even children that you don't know. Do donate them to your local charity, your local doctor's office, so that the children waiting for their appointments can have something to play with. Either way, guys, it's a great project, and I hope you're going to give it a try. Guys, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click the bell, and then you're not going to miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. Although this is kind of a repeat of the introduction of the book from before, there are a lot of different methods that I used here today, and I hope that you've enjoyed the content, guys. I really hope that you're going to try this for yourself, and more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.